WDAF, Kansas City. Dan Henry, WDAF Local News at 11, the outlook for Kansas City, mild. The Missouri House and Senate are meeting in extra sessions tonight in order to attempt to find agreement on the state's $2 billion budget. And there's talk that budgetary committees could be working all night. If Kansas City's area construction is to be stopped tomorrow by a full-scale strike, no one is saying so. Representatives of ten major construction unions met behind closed doors today, but made no mention of an intended strike at the close of the meeting. Today, pickets were posted at several construction sites, stopping work on the Crosby Kemper Memorial Arena and the new convention center complex in downtown Kansas City. School teacher strike talks continue under the auspices of federal mediator Beryl Carlew. Today, teacher union president Norman Hudson was escorted from the Jackson County Jail to a negotiating session, then returned to his cell. The strike will be 38 days old tomorrow with no immediate end in sight. from American Information Radio. This is Merrill Muller in Los Angeles, and at this hour, the Miami Herald Tuesday edition reports that President Nixon will risk impeachment and refuse to meet the House Judiciary Committee subpoena for 42 tapes and documents. The Miami Herald quotes an unnamed Republican source as saying the President is ignoring the advice of Republican leaders because he's confident of winning a Senate trial. The deadline on the committee's subpoena is Thursday, Meantime, the committee has sent a new message to the White House asking for other information. Chairman Peter Odino told us in Washington there's even more to come. I can say that it's not unlikely that requests will be going out. I instructed our counsel to uh, specify what those requests are, and uh, those requests would cover the areas that are within the general scope of our inquiry. But Chairman Rodino also emphasized that future requests on the White House will have to be approved by the entire House Judiciary Committee. Democratic governors and congressmen talk of tax cuts. That story coming up. This is Joan Crawford speaking for USO, United Service Organization. Do we as civilians know what it's like to be far from home in a foreign land? Listen to this real-life documentary about one of our servicemen over there. Uh, do you speak English? Nein, ich spreche kein Englisch. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. I wonder if you could help me. Nein, es tut mir leid. Excuse me, miss. Can you help me? Leider nicht. Bitte schön. Yes, uh, do, you, do you speak English? Nein, nein. Excuse me. Can you help me? Nein. Excuse me, can anybody help me? Hi, we sure can. This is the USO, and we have all kinds of help. That's why I support USO, and you should too. USO makes a man feel closer to home while he's serving his country for you. Isn't money the least you can give? Please support USO. Fifteen Democratic governors meeting in Chicago have urged Congress to write a tax relief plan for low- and middle-income families, despite any objections by the administration. Correspondent Bob Clark has more on the talk of tax cuts in Washington. It may just be spring fever, but sentiment for cutting taxes was bursting out all over on Capitol Hill today. During their Easter vacation, many members of Congress found the folks at home on the brink of rebellion over the combination of high taxes and runaway inflation. With the growing fear of recession adding to the gloomy economic picture, there's a sudden groundswell of support in Congress for tax relief to stimulate the economy. The Senate's Democratic leader, Mike Mansfield, says he's all for it. A proposal by Democratic Senators Mondale and Kennedy to raise the personal exemption and thus reduce everybody's income taxes is drawing sudden support from other members of Congress, including some key Republicans. Bob Clark, ABC News, Washington. Veterans Administrator Donald Johnson has announced he will submit his resignation in the near future. Congressional leaders said after a White House meeting today, Johnson had already lost some authority in a department reorganization. American Telephone and Telegraph Board Chairman John DeButts has revealed in Atlanta that AT&T is seeking a 20-cent rate for pay telephones and a 10-cent charge for information in all states where it has not yet been approved. Indonesia's Minister of Communications has announced some survivors have been found at the site of a Pan American Airlines crash on the island of Bali. No numbers are announced. 
the plane reportedly fell with 107 persons aboard on its landing approach to Bali on Flight 812 from Hong Kong to Australia. Postal service to Canada has been halted at the request of the Ottawa government because of the strike by Canadian postal workers. This is Information Radio News. Senator Henry Jackson in a New York speech has urged the Nixon administration to seek a new agreement with the Soviet Union, sharply reducing nuclear missiles. Senator Jackson charged that U.S. security is endangered by administration efforts to reach what he called a cosmetic arms agreement this June. The head of the Petroleum Exporters Association has announced at the United Nations that oil prices will remain fairly stable until October, and then if inflation is worse, oil prices will go up again. From the Kurt Murr Sports Desk, the Kansas City Royals lost to the Boston Red Sox 4-1 to tonight. They'll try again tomorrow. The St. Louis Cardinals were idle today. They'll host Houston tomorrow. The Milwaukee Bucks play Chicago, and the Bucks uh, leading the best of seven series 3-1. to And the Kansas City Omaha Kings forward Ron Behagen has been named to the NBA All-Rookie Team for 1974. The Kansas City outlook fair and cool tonight with a low around 45, then mostly fair and warmer tomorrow with a high in the middle to upper 70s. Dan Henry. WDAF News. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of terrifying imagination. The fear you can hear. Somebody said it, I believe, or if he didn't, he should have. The world is neither good nor bad. Tis wishing makes it so. Our story is about a fey, elfin young woman who made her own world and who had a disturbing and fateful capacity to make her dreams come true. Not always in exactly the fashion or the dimension she wished for. I'm warning you, you stop hanging on to me, Marge. I got to, Tom. You just can't do it to us anymore. Just lay off of me. Tom, you can't do this again. Then I got the lock tonight. I can feel it all going for me. The way you always feel. Please. Marge, let go. You want to put the whammy on me? I said... Tom, you let go. <laughs> I didn't mean to push. Oh, Lord. Ma? Ma? Ma! Pa, you killed her, Pa! You killed her dead! Our mystery drama, The Wishing Stone, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Clarice Blackburn and William Prince. It is sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal, and by new sugar-free diet 7-Up. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Hello, Ms. Goldilocks here, and welcome to my professional taste-testing laboratory. Oh, Papa Bear, mm -hmm. could you bring that case of sugar-free Diet 7-Up over here? Another case? Ms. Goldilocks, you're drinking this sugar-free Diet 7-Up like there's no tomorrow. You can't still be taste-testing it. Oh, no, Papa Bear. Sugar-free Diet 7-Up has already earned my seal of approval. It's fresh, light, natural. Delicious. I drink it because I love its taste. Now hurry up. Okay, okay, here. Mm-hmm. This sugar-free diet 7-Up really tastes delicious. Ladies, if you're tired of switching from one diet drink to another, take some advice from Ms. Goldilocks. Try sugar-free diet 7-Up and you'll say, Yes, this one's just Right. I'll bear witness to that, Goldie. <laughs> Project Hope is reaching out, bringing hope to more countries around the world this year than ever before. Newest addition to Hope's international programs is Ethiopia, where Project Hope's doctors, nurses, and other medical specialists will be working side-by-side -side with Ethiopians, 
teaching while they treat. Since 1960, Hope has trained more than 7,000 physicians, dentists, nurses, and other health care personnel. Has helped establish new schools of nursing, dentistry, and physical therapy in several countries. And assisted in the development of hospitals, teaching institutions, and public health services. Hope's work has been heralded by heads of many nations. Its services requested by many, many more. Hope is training and sharing. Hope is treating and caring. Is what hope's all about. Help Project Hope reach out. Help Hope reach out. Right, Project Hope, Room A, Washington, D.C. We are such stuff as dreams are made on. And our little life is rounded with a sleep. That quote is definitely Mr. Shakespeare's. But our little life is equally founded and sometimes confounded on dreams. Like the bad one Jenny Coulter had a few moments ago. And for which, fortunately, there is present comfort in the person of her mother and, in turn, her brother Judd. Jenny, you all right? It's you, Ma. You. Oh, you all right? Well, I'm fine, honey. What, you have a bad dream? I suppose. Oh, now that I see you. Oh, Ma, it was so real. I saw you lying there at the bottom of the stairs, and and your head, oh, it was turned to the side like, oh, like... Well, now, oh. now, don't let it upset you. Here I am, right as rain, and it was only a dream. But it was just like I saw it happen. He pulled his arm away from you while you were hanging on. And you went tumbling down. He? Who's he? I... I don't want to talk about it. Oh, was it your father? Yes. Who else would it be? Judd, wh what are you doing up? I heard Jenny Lou cry out. Oh, it was just a bad dream is all. You woke cases? I'm just fine now. You go on back to bed now, son. What did you dream the old man did to Ma, Jenny? Ma was trying to stop him from going out gambling again. And he sort of pushed her off him like... And she tumbled all the way downstairs. Oh, that's enough fussing about nothing now. You get back to bed, Judd. Okay. Good night, Jenny. Good night, Judd. Uh, you, you want I should close the door, Ma? No, I'm coming back to bed myself right away. You're not scared no more, are you, honey? No. As long as I know you and Judd are close by... But I sure was scared. Oh, my baby, you're just so sensitive. Everything touches you close like a little old butterfly sitting on a leaf with your feelers reaching out all a tremble. I like being butterfly. That's a pretty sort of thing to think on. So you just keep thinking on it and hustle yourself back to sleep. Good night, Jenny. Good night, Ma. I love you. And I love you. Sleep tight. Ma, <gasps> sakes alive, Judd, you like to startle me out of my wits. Come away from Jenny's door. I thought I told you to go on back to bed. Was you and Pa having an argument again tonight? When? Well, right now, that, that she might have heard. Your father isn't even here. He went on out after you kids went to bed. Yeah, I bet he's over the stove is playing poker. Oh, Tom don't mean what he does. He's sick. Yeah, and so am I. I'm sick of him. <laughs> here in the kitchen, uh, Dr. Luther. How's Jenny? Jenny Lou's just fine, Marge. She's getting dressed, and I'm going to drop her off at school on my way into town. It ain't the encephalitis again. You got to stop worrying about that, Marge. It's not so easy. After last year, getting put back one grade after missing all her classes. It won't take her long to jump back where she belongs. That's a right smart little girl. She used to be before. Uh, that's what I want to talk to you about. If I've told you once, I've told you half a dozen times that Jenny was one of the lucky ones. She came through it without a scratch, physical or mental. But such a long time. It was a very mild case, even if it was stubborn and protracted. It's just I worry so that she... She was... 
somehow held back. Now, I want you to get that clean out of your mind, once and for all. But sometimes she seems so, so young. <laughs> oh, Lord, what do you want her to be at 16? I don't know of anyone fresher and lovelier and more unspoiled than your little girl. She wants to cling to childhood a little longer. Leave her be. Well, just so you're sure last year didn't hurt her none. There's only one thing I worry about with Jenny. What? Your husband. Lord knows why, but she thinks the sun rises and sets in her father. When she settles for being a woman, she'll have to open her eyes as to what he really is. Oh, Tom doesn't mean to hurt anyone, Doctor. You told me yourself that he's sick. Yeah, I think it is a kind of sickness, but not one a doctor can treat. What am I going to do? I don't know, Marge. Oh, uh, one thing I do know is I've got to go. People waiting at the office, but... Tom is hurting all of you. Bad. Worse, maybe, than any of you realize. And in the end, Jenny will lose the one he'll hurt most of all. <laughs> Judd, that you? Oh, yeah, Ma. Is Jenny with you? Oh, no, Ma. Oh, where you been? Baseball practice. Oh, why'd you think Jenny was with me? Because she didn't come home after school. Judd, it isn't like her to just take off. You don't suppose she... Well, she what, Ma? That dream shook her up. And Tom and me had another bad set to this morning. She wouldn't run away. Jenny? From us? Uh, no way. Well, she was sort of strange when she left this morning with Dr. Luther. Kind of, I don't know, excited as if she had some secret plan. You know how she gets. Uh, secret? Yeah. I bet I know where she is. Where? Well, I, I, I can't tell you. I mean, it's her own secret place. Only, well, the only reason I know about it is I was out rabbit hunting one day and I stumbled across it. She goes there to bird watch and, well, just to be alone, I guess. Now, she made me promise I, I'd never tell just where. I'll bring her home. Jenny? Jenny? Jenny, what, what are you doing hiding out here? I wasn't hiding. I just came here to... to say a little prayer. For, for who? Pa. Oh? And the sun was shining in. Like a big splinter of light. The way it does through the hole in the tree up there. Remember how I always used to think when we was little kids that it was God stretching down his hand to touch us? <laughs> yeah. It was a long time ago. Don't say that. Because he is there. He was here today. Leastways, one of his angels was. What? I was kneeling. And looking up into the sun... And all of a sudden, the birds was all still. And the whole hidey hole here filled up with golden light that sparkled and spun. And right over there, he was standing. Who? Him. The angel of the Lord. And I could feel him all around me, in me, warm and kind. So kind. Then he touched my hand and smiled and just faded away. And then I looked in my hand and I saw it. Oh, wait, I didn't lose it. Oh, no, here. This is what I found in my hand. Well, let's see. Well, what is it? It's a conjure stone, all gold and shiny. A stone I can wish on. The angel said that? He didn't have to. I heard the words inside me. You can wish on this, Jenny. You can have anything you want in the whole wide world. You just don't believe this is a wishing stone, Ma, do you? Jenny, right to the moment, I just got to say I'm so fussed and fumed about dinner being ready and you kids not and your father ain't home. I can hardly think straight about... Oh, Lordy, if my biscuits have risen, we're just going to have to sit and eat without Tom. Jenny, 
Don't bother my right now. I just want to try my wishing stone. Wish something nice for her. Uh, let's just hold up for a, a better time. I could wish Pa to hurry home so we wouldn't have to wait. I don't want to wait none at all. I got a math test tomorrow. I just got to pass her. I don't make the ball team, and I need every minute to study. <laughs> Except who am I kidding? If I stayed up all night, I wouldn't be ready for tomorrow. If you had a few more days, could you make it? Well, even just one, I'd stand a chance. Okay, here goes. No, 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 hold up a minute. Too late. Shh. I just wished there'd be no school tomorrow. No school tomorrow? What nonsense is that? Jenny, go bring them biscuits. Judge, you sit down. Ain't we gonna wait for Pa? We ain't waiting for nothing, not even wishes to come true. We're gonna eat our dinner before it spoils. Yes, Ma. I'll get the biscuits. You didn't have to be so rough on her, Ma. Play her game. I know, Judd. It's just I have no sense of humor left. Or fun. The way it is with us, if we had a wishing stone, we could use it for a lot better things than no school tomorrow. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? The two of you have had me half believing there is a power in that stone. Hi, March. Tom? Huh? Where are the kids? As if you care. Gone to bed. Where have you been? What was the action tonight? Bingo? Horses? <laughs> pool? Nope. Tonight I got a pretty fair excuse. The only thing I was gambling was my life. What's that supposed to mean? I've been a volunteer helper at a fire. <laughs> now it's finally out, I couldn't hardly wait to get home and tell the kids the good news. What good news? That the school burned down. Good news for the kids everywhere tonight. No school tomorrow. <laughs> Is there any other catastrophe in the world that carries with it an equal amount of joy than a school burning down? But this time, is it chance or is some supernatural force, sinister or benign, at play? We're going to find out that this simple phenomenon, or happenstance, is a great deal more than sheer coincidence when we return in a few moments with Act Two. Some research experts say you can't taste the difference between beers. Well, if they're right, then Anheuser-Busch wastes a barrel of time Beechwood aging Budweiser. Only they don't think so. Brewing beer right does make a difference. And they're betting a bundle that you can taste the difference in Bud. When it comes to brewing Budweiser, the Anheuser-Busch choice is to go all the way because they still care about quality. Look at it this way. If the Bud people have a choice between what some experts say and what beer drinkers say, well, you'd better believe they'll go with you beer drinkers every time. When you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. <laughs> Don't let anyone con you into thinking it's wrong to turn in a heroin pusher. You're not ratting. You're doing your part to wipe out one of the most insidious epidemics racking our country today. So don't let anyone kid you. If you really care about the quality of life, if you really care about improving society, you'll do everything you can to get the heroin pusher off the street and into jail where he belongs. If you have information about a drug pusher, use the heroin hotline. The number is 800-368-5363. That's toll-free from anywhere in the country. The number again is 800-368-5363. A trained operator will answer your call, take your information, and pass it on to experienced federal agents who will investigate. You'll make your own special contribution toward helping us wipe out what President Nixon has called public enemy number one. Call 800-368-5363. So, 
Jenny Liu, our 16-year-old who is determined to cling to childhood and all its happiest dreams, has made her first wish upon the conjure stone, the magic piece of shiny gold that came to her, she believes, at the hand of an angel. A wish that came true. Well, this one was a harmless enough request, although the manner of its granting has been destructive enough, if indeed it was actually granted. If this is a wishing stone, it is potentially as dangerous as a nuclear bomb. Did you say the school burned down, Pa? <laughs> it sure as Tucker did, Judd. Ain't that good news, Jenny? I reckon. I guess uh, I didn't mean to do it that way. Eh? You didn't mean to do what? To burn it down. I, I just didn't want it to be. That's all I wished on. Hey, what's she talking about, Mark? Oh, it's just Jenny found Don't you tell him, Mark. But don't, you, don't you tell me what? Oh, don't pay any mind to the young uns' nonsense. Just tell us about the schoolhouse and what happened. <laughs> Well, sir, I, I, I just about finished trimming up Mayor Saget's hedge, and I just started to get all my tools together to put back in a pickup when the fire horn went off. I heard that old horn go just a couple of minutes after. Shut up, yeah, yeah, I run straight over to the firehouse, being, being that close, and we took off. By the time we got there, she was past all saving. And it's funny, you know, you come to think of it, a brick building like that, you wouldn't figure it'd turn into a regular torch. Well, how'd the fire start, Pa? Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't believe this. And neither does nobody else credit it. But according to old Sam Wallace, all of a sudden, a flaming arrow comes straight out of the sky and cut right through the brick walls and everything and hit the oil tank and blew her wide open. That drunken old no good, some custodian. I'll bet he was drinking and dropped one of those foul old stogies he smokes and all that rubbish he's too lazy to clean out of the cellar. Yeah, it could be. It's, it's, it's what most everyone thinks. Still... Still what? Mm, it's hard to tell someone who wasn't there. But then if the way he told that story did make you stop at least once to sink on it... What do you mean? It was the first time I ever seen that old booze hound with his eyes put together like he really was seeing what he talked about. Anyways, uh, we talked enough. Hey, something to eat around here. I got it warm, and I'll serve it right away. Pa? Yes, sugar? That flame and lightning bolt, you said. How long before the fire horn sounded did it come? Oh, according to Sam's story, he, he lit out next door to the gas station. And call the fire department. Well, couldn't have been more than a couple of minutes. See, Judd? It did so work. Okay, if you want to believe it. Hey, what are you kids talking about? Well, forget it, Pa. Just kid talk. Oh, well, I'm too old to share. Oh, no. If you want to. Oh, well, sure I do. Well, Pa, it's, it, it's just for now, mind. Uh, Jenny and me's got to be getting to bed. <laughs> With no school to worry about tomorrow? If there's no school, there's plenty of chores they can catch up on in the morning. Scoot now, both of you. I'm serving your pa dinner. Good night, pa. Uh, let's go, Jen. But I wanted to You get on upstairs. It's past your bedtime. Yes, ma. Good night, pa. Good night, kids. Did you have to chase them off the bed? Little enough chance I get to see them. It's little enough chance you make to see them. Oh, lay off, will you, Marge? I'm not even laying on. If you stuck a little closer to home than to the other woman, maybe you'd know what goes on around your own house. Now, what other woman? Now, dang well, I'm it. I'm talking about Lady Luck, or whatever name you want to call her. My rival. Oh, Lady Luck. Whatever makes you gamble, Tom, one way or another, it's going to be the end of us. You ever going to see that before it's too late? <laughs> Why wouldn't you let me tell Pa about the wishing stone? Because. Because what? Because first thing you know, he'll take it off of you, that's why. Why would he? Because it's real gold? Jenny, that stone ain't gold. Then what is it? It's pyrite. What's pyrite? Oh, it's just what everybody calls... Well, it... Uh, it it's a sort of metal. Well, anyways, whatever it is, it's real precious to me. It's my lucky charm. Well, that's why you better not let Pa know what you think about it. Why? Well, you know what he's like. He, he cares about gambling more than he cares about anything. And 
All gamblers are real superstitious. Now, if he knew you had a lucky piece, especially if he heard the crazy story about you and the school burning down, he'd have it off of you so fast that it'd set your head to spinning. It isn't crazy. You heard me wish on the stone for no school, and now there is no school. That was just happenstance. You don't think it happened just because I wished it? Of course it didn't. Then I'm going to prove it to you. What do you want me to wish for? I don't want you to wish for nothing. I got to show you. Look here now. I'm going to wish... Jenny! What, Judd? Oh, you sound so funny. Well, maybe it's because I feel like that. I... what way? Well, I sort of... Well, you know, superstitious, like... It sort of gives you goosebumps if you think on it. What does? Well, now, look, Jenny, supposing... Now, now, now I'm not saying it did fall out this way, but... Supposing you did get what you wished for. You were the one yourself said you didn't mean to get it the way you did. No, that's for sure I didn't. I didn't want the schoolhouse to go on fire. <gasps> Gosh, Judd. Oh, supposing... Just supposing someone had been in there and got caught in the fire. Or a whole lot of folks. That's kind of what I'm saying. And my wish could have burned them all up. But the angel gave it to me. For sure, he couldn't have meant nothing bad to happen. I don't have to throw it away, do I, Judd? I can keep it. Well, that won't do no harm. So long as you don't wish on it. I guess I'll just put it away for my keepsakes. And, and I'll never use it unless... Unless what? Unless the angel comes and tells me to. Well, that's a right good idea, Jenny. And remember, don't let Pa get wind of that there stone. There would nothing hold him back from using it, even if he didn't believe in it. It's going to seem funny going to school in the courthouse. Mm, you think with only a Friday left in the week that I wait until Monday to start up again. I'm glad they did. I don't want to miss any more school ever. Then you better look out the things you go around wishing, Missy. Oh, she's took... I'm sorry, Ma. She's taking a pledge. What does that mean? I'm not going to wish on the stone anymore, because the wish you get might turn out bad for other folks. I think that's a very good pledge. Yes, only... <laughs> only what? I'll have to whisper. Well, no, don't mind me. I'm all finished. i got to get my books from upstairs. What's this you have to whisper? I was just going to say that with Judd's... With Judd's birthday tomorrow, I wanted to wish him a bicycle. He sure has his heart set on one. Well, you won't have to worry because he's already got one. Leastways, he will by later this morning. How? You see this flower tin? Yes. Watch this. Down under the flower... There, in this old glass salt cellar, is the money I've been saving up for most a year to get your brother the bike he wants. How come you kept it there? Your father, what he is, it had to be some real safe place to keep his hands off it. Who's that? Oh, it's your Uncle Al. He's driving me to work this morning. Get the door, honey, will you? My hands are all flour. Sure thing, Ma. You sure are as pretty as a picture. Getting to look more like your mother every day. <laughs> and they don't come any prettier than that. Oh, you and your honey talk. You should have been on a TV instead of behind a cage. <laughs> Thank God the bank don't keep its tellers there anymore. You make me sound like an ape. Uh, me, Tarzan. You, Jane? <laughs> <laughs> no, me, Jenny. There's <laughs> <laughs> well, a guy here laughing. I know you must be around, Uncle Al. Hi. Hi, Gabe. Give me some skin. Well, here's five. I'm at you. Ooh, ooh. Uh, say, that's some grip. You want an Indian wrestle? Oh, I'm going to be ready pretty soon to take you on. I think you're ready already. No, oh, i got no time this morning. i got to catch a school bus. Come on, Jenny. we got to scoot. Goodbye, Ma. Oh, have a good day, son. Bye, Ma. And get a real swell you-know-what. I will. Be happy, Jenny. I am. Bye, Uncle Al. Hey, it's great to see you. We'll make it longer next time. Bye, Uncle Al. Come on, Bye. Jenny. Mm. Make next time soon. You can count on it real soon. Oh, that's swell kids, Marge. I envy you. 
Yeah, they're what I live for these days. Uh, Tom left already? No, he's upstairs, dead to the world. He rolled in this morning around three, smelling like a brewery. That brother of mine, I'd like to knock his head off. The way he'll be feeling the time he gets up this morning, you won't have to. It'll fall off all by itself. I got to talk some business to him. Like what? Well, I don't want to get you involved in it, Marge. Well, if it's about money, I will be anyway. It is about money. And there's no use asking him. I... I went through his pockets last night, and he doesn't have one red cent. But he's got to. What for, Al? Jim Kenny called me at home late last night. The insurance agent? Yeah. Last payment on Tom's life insurance hasn't been made, and tomorrow's the last day of the grace period. But I gave him the money for that a month ago. You gave him the money? Oh, I was a fool, I know, but things had been going well for a while, like they sometimes do, or anyways, I thought they were. And he asked me to trust him, and oh... Lord, what am I going to do now, Al? I don't know, Marge. This time I... I just haven't got it. What do you mean, this time? Marge, Tom is hopeless. I've been carrying him for years, or thought I was. I gave him the $60 for that same payment. When I found out last night it hadn't been made, I was mad enough to kill him. One reason I waited till this morning is to cool off. I'd help you out, Marge, but I can't. I had to take out a new loan to raise the cash for Tom. I can't let the insurance go. You'd have a tough time getting a new policy written if this one lapses, but how? Nearly a year I've been saving it for a bike for Judd's birthday tomorrow. Instead... I'm going upstairs to beat the... No, no, take me downtown, Al. I just can't face Tom this morning. I'll have it out with him tonight. After what you made me have to do today, how could you steal money out of my purse and leave to go gambling again? All I want to do is run it up till it's enough to pay you back. You're sick. I'm not going to let you take the money I broke my back making today. I'll bring you back five times this. And, and you're not stopping me. Oh, yes, I will. I'm warning you. You, you. you stop hanging on to me. I got to, Tom. You just can't do this to us anymore. Just, just lay off of me. Tom, you can't do this to us again. I got the luck tonight. I can feel it all going for me. The way you always feel. Please. Let go of me. You want to put the whammy on me? I said, Tom. Let go. Oh! March. I didn't mean to push... Oh, my God. Ma, what happened? Ma! Oh, Judd, it's just like my dream. He killed her. Pa killed her dead. The terror of addiction. Step by step, it grows to envelop the addict till it becomes his whole world shutting out everything else. But the greater terror is the destruction of all who love him, dragged down with him, and eventually engulfed in a tragedy not of their making. I'll return in a moment with Act Three. And now another story of the ball and chain as Kellogg's Special K presents Veronica and Jeff. Oh, Jeffrey, isn't this romantic? Out in a quiet lake at night with you rowing the boat. Yes, Veronica, it's really neat. Jeffrey, what was that? Uh, frogs. Frogs that go bong? Uh, they're pretty weird frogs. Oh, Jeffrey, you're such a car. You have a ball and chain, like the ones they use in those Special K commercials. Yes, Veronica, it symbolizes my few pounds of extra weight. But I'm going to get rid of it. How? Uh, by exercising. You know, like rowing this boat and eating smart at every meal, starting with a Special K breakfast. You mean a one-ounce bowl of high-protein Special K, four ounces of skim milk, orange juice, and coffee? Uh, precisely. It's less than 240 calories, and it tastes delicious. It'll help me get rid of this ball and chain. I'll help too, Jeff. After all, we're all in the same boat. <gasps> you have a ball and chain, too. <laughs> Your happy ending could begin with a Special K breakfast from Kellogg's. Touch. People can help. People so much. This is Paul.
Paul Newman speaking. Ever been close to a family struck by cancer? Naturally, your feelings go out to them and you ask if there's anything you can do. And they say no thanks and you feel so helpless. Well, there is something you can do. You can tell someone in the family to get in touch with the American Cancer Society. Volunteers there are helping people every day with services, information, and counseling about local community resources. That can mean arranging transportation or homemaking help or informing them about existing rehabilitation programs. When your cancer crusader calls, join the people who care about people. Give generously. We want to wipe out cancer in your lifetime. endless moment in time. A few dreadful seconds ticked away, with every heart crying out to take them back again, to make this just a bad dream and not reality. Three people frozen in horror. The fourth sprawled at the bottom of the stairs, her neck bent at an impossible angle, frozen in what? Unconsciousness or death? Now, at last, the man brings himself to move. Marge. Marge. Don't you touch your power. I'll kill you dead. Oh, son. I'm not your son. I'm your enemy. Jenny, call the police. Emergency. We got to get him out of the hospital fast. Ma. 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 Okay, kid. Just take it easy. She's not going to die. You're not going to let her die, Doctor. Just hang in tough, kid. We'll do our best. I should have gone with the ambulance. Ah, oh, you're sticking right with me, brother. We see how your wife makes out. No, no, no. Look, officer, you... You don't think she... Well, for the sake of your own skin, you better hope she isn't. But, but, but it was an accident. Well, the way that boy of yours reacted looked like he wasn't so sure. Now, we got to get moving. Now, what happened to your daughter? Huh? Oh, oh, Jenny, uh... Oh, she went back to get something. Uh, where are you taking us? Oh, the hospital. First, anyways. Now, oh, here she comes. Come on, shake her leg, kiddo. I... I had to get something very important. Okay, okay. Hop in the front with my buddy, Officer Franks. <laughs> Okay, Harry. Straight to X-ray. You, uh, you got a family doctor, kid? Uh, yeah, Dr. Luther. Oh, you, you know his number? No, but I can look it up. Okay. Tell your doctor to get here as fast as he can. It, it's that bad? I wouldn't want to fake you out, son. It's not good. And I phoned Dr. Luther. He's on his way here. Is Ma going to die, Judd? I don't know. I'm... I, I'm scared. Real scared. So am I. Judd? What? I'm going to break my pledge. You forgive me? What, what, what pledge? I brought the wishing stone. I'm going to wish on it. I'm going to wish that Ma's going to be all right. Just like it never happened. If you want to, Jenny, go ahead. Can't do no harm. What well, can't do no harm? For me to use my wishing stone? Your what? Shh, quiet. I'm wishing right now. Are you the intern brought the colder case in? He is, officer. Oh, how is she? I'm waiting for x-rays right now. I'd say she has one chance in a thousand. For certain, sure, her neck is broken. And the way it's broken and other signs indicate to me her spinal cord is badly damaged. If it isn't severed altogether. I just can't understand it, Dr. Luther. When I brought Mrs. Colder in, I'd have sworn she was in deep coma. I was sure her neck was broken, spinal cord severed. There's no indication of that for my examination of her. Not the slightest in these x-rays. I know, but not in this second set. 
Was there a first? Yes. And that's a funny thing. When we developed them, everyone was fogged. And we don't know why. Well, these are perfectly clear. So is my patient's condition. I see no reason why she shouldn't go home. <laughs> Cheer up, son. All interns make mistakes. I made a few buttes in my time. And I'll say this for you. If you have to make one, make it on the gloomy side. They're the ones that don't hurt anyone or anything. <laughs> Except maybe your pride. But I can't understand it. That cop said it flat out that Mards was a goner. Well, maybe he was just trying to put the fear of God into you. Well, if he was, he sure succeeded. If it'll do any good. Well, you think I made a stone, Judd? You think I don't blame myself for what might have happened? You think I wasn't ready to kill myself if anything happened to Marge? I, 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 I don't know, Pa. I... Pa wasn't trying to hurt Ma, Judd. It was an accident. An accident that wouldn't have happened if... Pa wasn't sick with gambling fever. Well, I've learned my lesson this time. I'll never gamble again. Oh, Pa. Oh, that makes me so happy. I'm glad, honey. And it means I won't have to use the stone again. Hmm? Hmm? I can save up what's maybe the last wish for something special for all of us. Instead of having it to use it to stop you from gambling. Well, well, what stone? A wishing stone. The one I used at the hospital to wish Ma well again. Oh, oh that's right. I forgot. Listen, Duchess. Let me see that stone. Don't show it to him. Why not? I don't know. It's just a sort of hunch that... Wait a minute. Here comes the doctor. How's, how's my eyes, Dr. Luther? She's fine, more as a wonder. Oh, a few scrapes and a bruise or two and a lump on the head. Nothing a good night's rest won't take care of. Thank God. You should. It's a miracle she didn't break her neck in a fall like that. That intern at the hospital was sure she did. But she didn't. No, Judd, I told you she'll be as right as rain. Well, can, can I go up and see her now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was asking for you and the kids. She uh, wants to see you alone a moment first. I I'll go right up. Yeah, just to put your mind at rest, or maybe more hers, she doesn't want to prefer any charges against you. So you can tell her my report to the police will call it just an accident. She slipped and fell. I I'll tell her, Doc. You got off mighty lucky this time, Tom. You better not tempt fate again. Well, I won't. <laughs> Oh, I mean it, Marge. Just, just give me another chance. I didn't see how I could, Tom. I never meant to throw you down those stairs. Oh, not because of that. The last straw for me was taking a chance away from Judd to have something he wanted more than anything in the world, his bicycle. You should just have let the insurance go. How could I, Tom? With two kids to bring up, if anything happened to you, I... Not that I want anything to happen to you. You gonna take me back, Marge? I don't know, Tom. It's hard for me to feel for you what... what I once felt. But if you're gonna promise me you'll quit the gambling for the children's sake, we'll try to make a go of it. You won't be sorry, Marge. I hope not. I just... Wish I knew how to make it up to Judd tomorrow. If there was something I could pawn. You haven't left anything in this house that you could. Except the one thing you could never get your hands on. Well, what's that? My wedding ring. Do you... Do you think I could get enough on that? Well, n not enough to pay for it all. But for a down payment, then... I'll take that night job cleaning sewers. You made me turn down to pay it off. I don't want you working in any sewers. Anyway, you can't work day and night. Well, I, I can't till, till I get Judd his bike. Well, we'll see. I'll take the ring down in the morning. No, no, no sir, no, sir. Dr. Lewis doesn't want you out of bed. Just, I'll, I'll take it down. You? I, can't you trust me, Marge? Well, if you can't trust me now, then what the hope do I have or any of us I, I can ever be trusted? Well, you got to. Or I swear to God, I'd just as soon be dead. All right, Tom. 
I'll trust you. Did what? You ran out of the money. Look, Benny. You've got to do an old customer a favor, huh? you got to cover me for the fifth. Headlonger. Now, Benny, Benny, you got to. That 15 I laid out on the first was money I got for pawning my wife's wedding ring. I got to get it back. And I got a hot tip. The headlongers are sure. Benny, for, for God's sake. Oh, just, just this once. Please. Benny. Benny. What am I going to do? I wish to God... Wish. Oh, that wishing stone. Yeah. Where's Jenny, Judd? Oh, I left her down by the pond. We were skipping stones. I just came up to see how you were feeling. Fine. I'm going to get up. Your pa didn't get back yet, did he? No, ma'am. I ain't seen him since early morning when he pulled out in the pickup. Well... You go on back down and keep Jenny company. I'm going to make me a cake so we can have a real birthday celebration. Oh, it's all right, Ma. I, I don't need a cake. You're going to get a lot more than you bargained for. Now, go on. I don't like Jenny down by that pond alone. You know she can't swim. What? Hi, Pa. Well, what are you doing up on top of the rock here? Oh, just sunning myself and listening to the birds. Jenny... You, you know that wishing stone you talked about? Yes. Is it gold? You want to see? Yeah, yeah. Here. Oh, damn. It's nothing but pyrite. Isn't that a kind of gold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. fool's gold and even worth as much as a piece of charcoal. No, Pa. No. Don't throw it away. It's still good for one wish. <laughs> you think this makes any wishes come true? It made the school burn down. And Ma got her neck unbroken. You're a Ma... Why don't you grow up and stop your daydreaming? Don't you know nobody ever got nothing by wishing? I've been doing a kind of wishing all my life. Look at where I end up now. Well, I'm going to wake up your little Miss Bright Eyes to show just how tough a world this is. Pa! Please, please don't get mad. If this was a wishing stone, well, nobody ever needed it more than me right this moment. So look at this. I'm going to make a wish. I need money. I need it bad. So I'm going to wish that old Nick himself comes climbing up out of the middle of this pond with a sack of gold on his back for me. And I ain't going to be greedy. And I ain't going to ask for much. Just just say like a, a ten. No, 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 make it twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Now, I'll rub the stone and I wish. <laughs> you see? It ain't no wishing stone. It don't make dreams come true. It's a nothing. Ah! Oh, ah! Jenny, Jenny, help oh, me. No! Oh, ah! no! Ah! 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 Oh, why doesn't he come out? He... Help! Help! I can't swim! John! Help! It's Paul! <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to tell the kids, Al. They're not really children anymore, Marge. They know. I guess I do baby them. I won't anymore. In a lot of ways, they're better off. Tom... Well, Tom had a cancer that he just couldn't cut out. <laughs> Even my wedding ring, he... Oh, I didn't want him dead, though. Well, he is. And it was of his own making. Kind of queer, isn't it? What? Him trying to show Jenny Lou her wishing stone wasn't worth a darn, and he ended up having his wish come true? Not quite. The policy's only for 10000 There's... Double indemnity for accidental death, Marge. Tom got everything he wished for. The full 
20,000. Three wishes, and they all came true. Whether by some supernatural force or sheer coincidence, it doesn't really matter. For in the end, everyone was better off except the one who didn't deserve to be. This was the gambler's last plunge. One he should never have taken with the odds so stacked against him. Like Jenny, Tom Coulter had never learned to swim either. I'll be back shortly. Mm. Hey, we're the Action Corps. See, we contribute more. Cheese for the teamwork of our crew. Aye, our ideals are high. Oh, oughtn't you apply? Up. Means it's now that we need you. A, C, P, I. We could go on all day. is VISTA, the Peace Corps, RSVP, SCORE, and other volunteer programs that are helping people to help themselves. If you're trained at a skill or just have a little love to share, action needs you. Yeah, baby. Action really needs you. Action really needs you. Don't crawl under a rock. Get into action. Oh, yeah. This is a public service of this station and the Advertising Council. As for the wishing stone itself, since it lies buried deep somewhere in the mud at the bottom of the pond, no one will ever know if it had the power to grant wishes. For Jenny, like all of us, had no escape from a common fate that soon befell her. She grew up and inherited a mantle that only Peter Pan seems to have escaped. She stopped believing in magic. Our cast included William Prince, Clarice Blackburn, Anne Costello, Jack Grimes, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Your husband? You dreamed? It was no dream. Oh, it was my husband. His ghost. Oh, for the love. Rory, Rory. Stood at the foot of my bed. And he begged my forgiveness for leaving me a pauper and breaking my heart. And he said, Jessica, I promise you'll live in Gormley House again. And then he, he vanished. The very next night, the Putnams crashed through the bridge over Gormley Gorge. Well, accidents do happen. It was no accident. No, the real estate man didn't tell you the whole story. Mrs. Putnam lived long enough to tell just what had happened. The Putnams didn't go off the bridge by accident. They were driven off it. Forced to swerve off it by an oncoming car. A car driven by a skeleton. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated. Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. City.